Hey guys, welcome back to episode 4 of the K100 build. I'm sorry I haven't posted anything in the last three months. I've had quite a busy summer. I went camping a lot, I went to Burning Man, I did a couple track days. And during the summer it's just sort of hard to get motivated to spend a whole day in the workshop. But I've come back from the summer re-inspired to work on the project. In today's episode I'm going to be doing a couple different things. First I'm starting to design a new subframe for the seat. I bought the plans for this subframe online, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. This subframe and the suspension system was designed by a guy named Gustavo from Retro Rides. And I love the fact that he went to the trouble of designing a brand new suspension system for the bike. I think it looks awesome, but I'm not super keen on the design itself. So I'm going to do a little bit of work to resurface the parts and create sort of a new aesthetic. Then I'm gonna send out the parts that I've redesigned to be milled at a CNC shop. Next, I'm gonna start cutting up the frame to get ready for the new subframe. And finally, I'm gonna start running some tests on a pretty insignificant part to figure out the best way to polish up oxidized engine components. In this sketch, I'm really just going for overall proportion and gesture. I'm not trying to fill in too much detail I just want to get a rough idea in my head before I go into CAD. I'm being careful to keep the exact same locations of bolts and trying not to reduce the thickness of any structural parts. I love the forward leaning stance of the seat with this design, so I'm definitely going to keep that. But what I don't love is that the parts look really stiff and really engineered, for lack of a better term. And if you're at all familiar with the difference between solid modeling and surface modeling, you can kind of just tell that these were solid modeled. So I'm going to throw the parts into Alias and give them a little bit of surfacing love. Here I'm taking the model that I built from scan data and cutting off the portion of the frame that I'll no longer need. When I imported the CAD model from Retro Rides, I was a little bit disturbed because my scan data didn't really coincide with where the frame in their CAD was. But after taking measurements in the model and then going out to the garage and measuring the frame by hand, I've figured out that no, my scan data is absolutely correct. I think what happened is that they created a frame model that wasn't based on any dimensions at all, since their parts are somewhat independent from the frame. So I'm just going to choose not to worry about this for now. The original part is all flat surfaces, and it's so rare that you see flat surfaces on motorcycle or car design. I'm taking what was previously a completely flat surface and giving it a little bit of pump just to create a more interesting and dynamic highlight. Alias is an amazing program because it gives you much more control over surfaces than solid modeling programs. It allows you to control highlight and it allows you to create organic forms that just wouldn't be possible in SolidWorks. So I think I'll leave the rest of this for later, because right now I want to start to tear into the frame. I'm switching the angle grinder from a polishing grinder to a cutoff blade. So a word to the wise, if you're thinking about cutting apart a frame with an angle grinder, go ahead and wear a long sleeve shirt. I was in short sleeves and the sparks hitting my arm for 20 minutes caused it to burn really badly. But the sparks didn't really hurt as much as watching a beautiful 1980s relic of German engineering get reduced to some millennial bandwagon or cafe racer. Just kidding, I think it's going to be great. It's actually completely unnecessary for me to be grinding and polishing these welds, but I wanted to get in some practice before I moved to grinding the consequential welds. So at this point I wanted to move on to polishing some of the engine components. 
But first I wanted to test and figure out what was the best strategy for doing this. I went to the hardware store and picked up pretty much every abrasive product I could find because I want to cycle through a couple of them and figure out which ones will be the most effective. Okay, so, so far I've put in about a half hour of polishing this plate, and it's not going as quickly as I would have hoped. There have been a couple ineffective things completely, like Scotch-Brite is clearly for a later part in the process. It's really just a light enough grit that it should just be used for polishing. Um, so far what has been working well is 150 grit sandpaper and grade two steel wool. That seems to be the best so far at removing some of the oxidation and scale. Um, I sprayed it down with brake cleaner, but this I noticed is actually the non-chlorinated version, um, and I don't think it's very effective or very powerful. So I've gone on Amazon and ordered the good stuff. It should be here shortly. But in the meantime, I'm gonna continue going at it with 150 grit sandpaper and grade two steel wool. Also, this nylon brush is probably good for getting road grime off of the parts, but it's really not doing any polishing of any sort. I also tried using an electric drill with this wire brush on the end, but that was really just scratching and marring the surface, and I've had to play a lot of makeup trying to get past those scratch marks, so I wouldn't recommend this at all. Now, I wanted to move on and apply what I had learned to the valve cover. This is really one of the features that I think makes the K-Series bikes so amazing. To take this off, I wouldn't have even had to strip the bike down. This was clearly designed with serviceability in mind, and I love that. All things considered, the valve train looked great. I didn't exactly know what to expect when I cracked this thing open, but I was pleasantly surprised by how nice everything looked. The cam lobes don't show anywhere. I still have to check if everything is in spec, but I'll do that a bit later. I'm not sure what this brown stuff is. I tried to scrape it a little and it seems like it's not really a risk for coming off into the engine compartment. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Let me know in the comments if anyone knows what this is. I'm masking the inside portion of the valve cover just because I don't wanna have to clean out a bunch of microscopic aluminum particulate after I'm done. So this is just a bottle with warm water and a little bit of soap. I found this to be really helpful because it keeps the grit and the sandpaper clean from debris and I think allows it to remove material more efficiently. So it's been kind of difficult to get sandpaper grit into the, the ridges of the valve cover. So. What I've found is taking a wrench that's about a little, little less width than the ridges themselves, wrapping sandpaper around it is a good way to get into the corners of those ridges, and it's been pretty effective so far. Okay, so for the most part, I've run this thing through 150 grit sandpaper. There's still some corners down in here that I have to get to, but the, the main surfaces have been polished up with 150, and it's been really time consuming. I think I've been working for about an hour and a half or so, um, and there's still a lot of work to be done. Even... Okay, well, I put in about another hour's worth of sanding with 150 grit. I tried to get down into these inside corners that were giving me trouble earlier, and I think it's looking pretty good. The end goal for this piece is really just to get the surface ready to take a coat of primer, and I think we're getting close. One thing to call out is that this is a cast aluminum part, so there's a lot of pits in the surface that I just don't think I'm going to be able to remove completely, but I think it'll be fine. I can put a coat of primer on it and then sand it down further. I know it looks like there's still a lot of dirt or grime or something on the valve cover, but it's really just discoloration. I kept running my finger over all the surfaces, and really the only important thing to me is that the surface feels smooth, so it'll take paint. 
So I think the final step for this part is going to be putting a little bit of the heavy um, metal polish compound onto the wheel. I don't want to go too far because I still want the surface to be able to take a coat of paint. I don't want to chrome it up or anything, but I want it to be uh, shiny enough that I can get a high gloss black paint to look good on the surface. And I'm going to use black emery compound, which is, it's sort of the fast cutting compound and it's used for pretty much any metal. It's the heaviest grit. Okay, I did a quick buff on this and I backed off because I'm a little bit worried about polishing it up too much and not getting good paint adhesion. Um, and the paint shop might have to rough it up again. So I think this is good for now. I think this is gonna take a coat of paint well. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up for the day. Um, if I could pass on what I learned from this process, I'd say you don't need to mess with too many fancy uh, abrasives. I would just go at it with 150 grit sandpaper and some steel wool and there's really no substitute for elbow grease. I was surprised how long it took, but I'm pretty pleased with the results, and I think I'm gonna apply this same process to the next few parts. So before I wrap up this episode, which I promise is soon, I wanted to give you a quick sneak peek as to what's to come in the next few episodes. I've reached a point in the project where I'm feeling confident enough that I can start to order some of the high dollar upgrades for the bike. Cognito Moto offers a made-to-order custom stem and triple tree so that you can mount pretty much any modern front end to any classic bike. This really starts to run up the price of the project, but I think the lower stance of a modern sport bike front end, dual caliper brakes, and a brand new front wheel just looks so cool. Most of the people I've seen doing this conversion on their K100 go for a Gixxer front end conversion but I'm choosing a 2015 to 2019 Yamaha R1 front end, and here's why. I really want the front wheel to match the look of the OEM rear wheel that came with the K100. And this third-party CNC'd front rim for an R1 looks like it's gonna match the rear wheel of the K100 perfectly. And finally on eBay, I found some used stock R1 brake calipers that look like they're in fairly good condition and have brand new looking brake pads to boot. Well, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you guys tuning in, and I appreciate all the comments that have come in, so thank you.